Today is April 30th, finally the last day of LeetCode 30 day coding challenge. Problem for today is what? I need to scroll down to the bottom of the list. Check if a string is a valid sequence uh, from root to leaves path in a binary tree. That's quite a des descriptive title. We are all after four weeks. Congratulations to everybody who participated, solved all the problems, maybe watched all the videos. In a few days I should do some summary of, of this. It's the first time ever I took part in something, doing a thing every day for a month. And it's both about coding and it's about making videos for YouTube. So it's new for me. As I said, I'm not doing the same in May. Given a binary tree where each path going from the root to any leaf form a valid sequence. What? Forms. Check if a given streak is a valid sequence in such binary tree. We are given a tree and array and I want to this array to appear on a path. Shouldn't be hard, but the array is quite big. I will compare the first element of an array with root and then go to both children saying them you start with this next element of the array. You should match that one. Maybe array Either array should be passed globally, by reference is also fine. I will have some helper function for that. What will that be? A bool? Yeah, because I'm just returning true or false. I can even count such paths, but let's go with bool. Uh, DFS, why not? Not root. Let's say we pass this by reference with a constant to make sure I'm not modifying that by coincidence, by mistake. And index, or actually this index will be depth. But I could also name this index in an array. I will return DFS of root, array and depth. Most of the time I'm going to, to children and I will say return DFS of root left, comma ri passed, that plus one. And I should return true if either this is true or the same is true for the right child. But there are some details left. If I am a leaf, then I should return true if depth is equal to size of the array, if I'm already done with the whole thing. So wait. Oh, also there is value. I need to compare values. If root is null, so you return depth is equal. I think array dot size, but I will need. I need to be careful about some plus one, plus minus one mistake here. Maybe it should be this plus one. We'll think in a moment. But that should be fine. Or actually, I want to get to the to the leaf. Let's read the statement again. From the root to any leaf. Uh, valid sequence is such a binary tree. I need to get to a leaf. So it isn't enough for me, like for some vertex, that I see one of my children is not, uh, not present. I think we need to be smarter than that. Uh, what about this? If this is a a, a null, then return false. Not this. Because I shouldn't for a vertex say, oh, I, I have one child that doesn't exist, a null, then he returns true, so I return true. No, both need to not exist. But if both left and is null, and this is null, this means I am a leaf. If I'm a leaf, then return depth is equal depth. And now minus one because I want to be the last element. First of all, first of all, if root value or val is not array of depth, then return false. 
because the value doesn't agree. I needed to first check for a null, otherwise this would give me random error because null doesn't have any value. In this case, return false. If left is null and so if I am a leaf, then return true if and only if def is correct. This points to the last element of the array. Otherwise, go to both children and pass def plus one. So def could, as I said, could also be named index in an array. The complexity will be linear, just like any problem about a tree. If you run DFS, it will pass every vertex just once. Uh, what is wrong? Def. Compilation error says that here I'm passing def. It should be zero, obviously. Initially, for the root, I want to be at def equal to zero. Is there some issue if root is null? Well, if array is empty and root is null, then theoretically, according to this definition, I should return like false. I'm doing something wrong. I believe I'm accessing a null. Oh, I'm not accessing null. I'm going outside of the array. Here, I'm trying to access depth element of the array, but it might not exist. If I'm out of the array, I should return false. I could write it here. If out of the array return false, but let's combine two if conditions. If depth is greater or equal than array.size or this. And this basically says, if it isn't true, that on this position I have this value. I should be more careful about things like this. Just, yeah, I don't see any excuse for me about that. Accept it. The last problem, and let's see on any of those examples what, what happens. When array is 0, 1, 0, 1, I start in the root and I s and at, with depth equal to 0. So I'm trying to match this element of the array. Then I run recursively for both children, and if any of them returns true, I will also return true, because I found a path. Also, I could do something like have a global variable hill, answer is false, and in this case, if I see that I am a leaf and the last element of the array also matches, then answer is, becomes true. But I decided to return a value from a function, that's also fine. What happens next? Uh, I'm now at position in this position, depth is equal to 1. Element of index 1 in this array is this. And you need to match the value. In my right child, false will be returned. The value doesn't match. But in my left child, 1 matches the value, so I go recursively to two children, and so on. Then 0 is required, so this will match. 1 is required, so this will match. The other one doesn't. I have an if for that. If root is null, return false. If I go from this vertex to its left child, false will be returned. But if I see, um, if I have this vertex, it doesn't have any children, and it matched the last element of the array, then true is returned. Nothing more to analyze here. This problem was just about knowing how to run DFS in a tree. I expect that maybe something harder for the last day, but I don't blame lead code. Nobody said that problems would be of increasing difficulty. This was a cool experience, but quite annoying if you have some other responsibilities some particular day, you're very busy. Though I can find 10 minutes or 20 minutes of my time. If problems were harder for me, so if I was a beginner in with coding interviews or with coding, it would be for sure harder to continue a streak. To, uh, Sometimes you don't have time during a day and you need to find that hour to think about a hard problem. Still, the initiative was very nice and you can participate in May as well. LeetCode organizes a similar kind of competition in the next month because people requested that and that's very nice of them. Feel free to participate. Maybe I will later look at some of the problems or will do some speedrun. I heard that William Lin is doing a speedrun in a few days to upload on his YouTube channel. If he does one, I will link in the comments or the description of the video. I hope you enjoyed this 30-day series. See you soon during solving some code forces or add coder problems, or maybe finally lectures on graphs. 
See you next time. Bye. To today is April April 30th. Today is April 